Now it's our personal finance segment. And on this segment, we are talking about tips for financial bliss in marriage. And of course, we have Chad Fakur Harad here in the studio this Friday morning. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning, Good morning. Morning, then, Samson. How are you doing this morning? Yes. Um, I think I'm going to take over this show today. Sorry, this segment. <laughs> you know. I think I should be sitting there or here so that I will ask some of the well, questions. Well, feel free. Yes. Um, I don't want to sound as if we are in a marriage class or in okay. a, you know, a marriage seminar and all mm -hmm. that, but that's what it seems now. And um, we need to lay the foundation, you know, financial bliss in marriage. We need to lay the foundation. You know, first of all, what is even an LT marriage? Most people will, they are very free to talk to their therapists about their sex life or what they do in the other room. But when it comes to finance, people are afraid to discuss their finances with their financial planners or accountant. I will ask ourselves, why? It is because our, not that we don't have this money or we have so much. It's our relationship. How we relate with this money. That's just it. When couples fight because of money, it's not because they don't have so, they have so much or they don't have. It is because of their relationship to money. One person could be a spender, the other person can be a saver. Mm. This it is this conflict that we are seeing playing out. But again, we ask ourselves: if we don't discuss this important issue, and we say it is a taboo, then we have discovered that it's money, finance has wrecked so many marriages, over 90%. Yep. But the reason is, why? You know, there's no love in that relationship. There could be love. But the issue is because we don't talk about it during courtship, after the marriage, and when we start that our marital life, we don't discuss it. And once there is no open communication in marriage, what happens? instability so but i don't want to see it as if once you fix your finance you have fixed every okay. other part of your life and that's why i'm saying today for your financing marriage just one aspect of your marital life now why is it that people go into marriage they don't even have the understanding of what marriage is all about and if you think you want to get bliss happiness mm -hmm. In marriage, he will not. It is one institution, very fun institution. You all attended schools, have you? Mm -hmm. It's when you complete your program, they give you certificates. What will happen in marriages? It's on that day they are giving you the certificates. So you don't even know where you're going to graduate. So all of us become perpetual students of marriage. And well, with due respect, even the religious bodies don't even make it easy for us. They tell us what God has joined together. And also, let no man put asunder. But if you have weakness in marriage, somebody said, uh, he has seen a marriage that lasted for three hours. <laughs> Just three hours. Immediately after the church, wedding, reception, everything, you know, before they got home, the marriage has uh, collapsed. But they were joined in the church. Mm. And somebody said, what God has joined, let no man put asunder. Let's take a bit and reflect. Is it that what God has joined, somebody has put asunder? Or are we actually sure that God has joined that marriage? It's a puzzle. Even uh, marriage counselors, Amateur marriage can like us. Mm -hmm. We are asking the question. I'm also, I must clear something. I'm not a full time marriage counselor. But like I said, I got into it while talking to people about their finances. Financing. And this issue, you know, kept coming up and up and up, you know. It's very funny. You talk to a young lady about buying her shares for her, managing her portfolio, mm -hmm. and after doing that for quite some time, and she said, Come, Mr. Charles, it's only my finance we're talking about. You are budding. My relationships are not working. What is happening? I have so much money. How do you make that are coming for me? They don't want my money, they want. 
I'm a love. I don't know anything about marriage. I told her, I don't know anything. But try to become a financial therapist now. We looked at the curriculum. Said no, financial therapists must understand marriage, counseling, therapy. So we all had to go through that process. And it was very, very exciting. And it made our job so easy. You know, so that when you're not talking to the man, you know that yes, he has a better half to compliment Amen. them. So whatever financial advice you are giving to that the, the man or woman, you know that for that thing to work, then his better half must also be attuned with those um, advice right. before it can um, work. Work. Okay. Yes. Well, that's so, a question. Talking about um, you know, financial bliss in marriage, um, it definitely requires you know both the husband and wife to to um have a healthy relationship with money and yes. your finances to enjoy that bliss. So, um, ca can you run us through some of the tips that would enable couples have this, you know... Yes, Samson, don't worry, this is Friday, we are coming there. Mm -hmm. But we need to lay a foundation. Yes. You know, we need to lay a foundation. So, we need to understand that marriage itself. <clears throat> you know, what are we expected to do? Like I said, it's the only institution that they give you the certificates before they even start the program. Now, well, at one point in time, we were running this financial planning for workers. And the HR of that company, a very big, I will mention a very big company, now said, some of their workers have come to complain. That's all the things we are telling them. This would all work because of their wives or husbands at home. That they will want them to ask the consultant, we now, to see how we can extend the program to their wives. And of course, husbands. We have been scheduled to stay two days in Port Harcourt in Hotel Presidential, but they have to extend it. Of course, the company was willing to pay. And their spouses came, of course, husbands, you know, wives, and we ran the program for them. And of course, it was very revealing. It was a high opener to me because they said it's an oil and gas company. They said because they taught them fire prevention technique. And they say it's every family member that is supposed to have that skill. Mm -hmm. So in case the husband goes around, the wife and even the kids. So financial planning too is also critical for the wives or the husbands as the case may be. And we ran them that program. Then somebody also now asked again and said, their children too need to understand some bit of financial planning. So we are forced to go and design a program for kids with money or kids and money. But as a financial planner, we always advise that you don't get your children too involved in your finances. That's a word we call it. It's financial insight. Yes, when you get your kids, they know that you are going through financial stress. You don't get them. You don't affect them in future. Okay. Yes, they are going to see that that is how finance is. And when they also become adults, then they also be looking at it that way. So most of the problems we are seeing today Financial issues, money problems, as a result of what we have experienced in childhood. Mm. A bit of psychoanalysis, right? There. Yes, that is the issue today. Mm -hmm. And we have also come to discover that marriages are the bedrock of the society. If marriages are okay, society will also be okay. okay. But what do we see today? There was something I saw on the social media. They say a woman was pursuing the husband's side chick. And she got an accident and she died. Now, they will bury her and they will say, rest in peace. Are you sure it's going to rest in peace? And somebody was calling in, trying to discuss and say, well, it's for how she will allow the husband to go away with the uh, side, side chick. Yeah. She also go along with her own side guy or something <laughs> like that. So you can see, and there is continuous problem in this society. Marriages are breaking down. Just like our environment is collapsing in terms of climate change. Everything is just, so we need to step in. Now, so you okay. mentioned something. Let me just speak from that. And about not getting your kids so involved yes. in your um, finances. It's called finance, financial incest. Yes. Now, the thing is, you also mentioned that it may, it may shape their mind to think that that's how finances are when yes. they grow up. Yes. But looking at it from another way, don't you think that it is also important that they are involved? Maybe not so involved because a child might grow up having 
the parents provide for every single thing they have and they, they think life is a bed of roses without yeah. thorns. So having to involve them and say, this is what daddy has now. Daddy doesn't have so much money to buy you ice cream mm -hmm. every week or take for a pizza date every week okay. as I used to do before. Daddy cannot afford this school now. Let us look for another school. Don't you think it would also help them shape their memory that, okay, daddy used to be this, but now that is no more. That means I should be able to manage money in the future. Yeah, very correct, okay. Margaret, yes. What we are trying to say, at least there are different stages in their development. Mm. And that's why we say kids and money. It's a special program for you as a parent. You know when you place your child on allowance. Mm -hmm. You know when the child does something, oh, you know? You know when, if the child is seven years, there is a particular program in terms of finance, the child is expected to know. The child is in secondary school. There are certain financial issues the child should be aware about. Then, of course, when they are undergraduates, you know, you can even place some of them to even work in your family business and you pay them as you're going to pay any outsider. What we are saying is, if you are stressed financially, mm. don't let them, you know, oh, it's your mommy that is causing it. Oh. It's your mommy that is eating all the money. You know, they've retrenched me from work. You know, and all that. You, because it's, it's, it's a trauma you are giving to them. You, as the father, you are supposed to take care of them, no matter what it takes. And that's why we have seen parents who will say, I am ready to do the menial job just to put food on the, the table. table. That is the spirit. Mm. We also see some parents who want to rely on their kids. Mm -hmm. We see them, you send them out to go and walk on the express. We are not saying they cannot walk within an estate. Good, their safety is more important. But you send them to go and walk on the express. I've even seen kids who tell me, once they finish their junior secondary school, the father will say, I'm no longer responsible for you again. And they want to come and learn sewing and work, usually in this part of the country. Mm. Yes, I don't want to mention any tribe. And they will be looking for the money to pay for that thing they want to learn. This is trauma to the child. And that's why you say that is financial insight. Mm. Because you are making them get involved at that tender age where you should show up, shower all your love to them okay. for them to grow up healthy. Yeah. Where, where's the place of financial infidelity in you know, ensuring that one has you know, um, tips, um, one has a finan um, financial place in marriage? Yes, financial infidelity, we have defined it here before. Yes. When you don't disclose your finances to your spouse. Yes. Now, before you even say, I do, you should disclose what you already have. Your partner to disclose what he or she has so that you know that this is what you are going into. Mm, so. But people don't talk about it. And when they say, I do, they get into that marriage, mm. then you begin to see issues. See, no matter how good you are, you and your spouse, these are two different personalities. There is bound to be conflict. So, but it is the way and manner you resolve it that matters. So your financial issues should be open. You could be having so much debt, she does not have. You could come from a wealthy home, she didn't come from a wealthy home. These are two different personalities. So two of you have to be open. And that's why marriage counselors talk about open communication and transparency in marriage. You just, but you see sometimes the female folk is even worse off. How can somebody say, I'm going to get married to this person because he has money? Mm. Money is very important. Very, very important. People plan for their wedding, but they don't plan for their marriage. They are two different things. Up to the type of the color of the dress people will put on that day, even up to the type of flowers that we used to decorate, whatever, they plan to that detail. But they don't even begin to plan after that wedding. Where are we going to stay? How many kids are we going to have? You know? In terms of our financial goals, they won't sit down together. So these are things they should sit down together before they even go and say, I do. But if you are interested in just planning for that wedding, that one day affair, and after that, like I said earlier, somebody said they have seen a marriage that collapsed three hours after the marriage or after the wedding, before they got home and they were driving them to their house. They started quarreling, I know do, I know do, and that is the end of the marriage. And we are looking at it. It's a very serious issue. 
And that's why I want to lay this foundation for mm -hmm. how do you know that a marriage is healthy? You need to go for what they call, marriage expert call, health, uh, marriage health tests. Yes, and I'm going to list some of those signs. Then we'll now go and start talking about the tips for us to have okay. financial bliss. Even me as I'm talking to you now, it is an ongoing, it's work in progress. Definitely. Nobody is perfect about their marriages, you know, but the willingness. As long as your partner does not have a mental illness, then, and two of you have claimed to love each other, then it can work out. So let's now, before we go to that, your marital mm -hmm. bliss, let's look at the 12 sides that, um, okay. for a healthy marriage. We'll take them one by one very quickly. The first one is, the two partners, they cultivate healthy, healthy self-acceptance. You must accept yourself first. You must be friend with yourself first. Mm -hmm. You must have a self-esteem about yourself before you can begin to love somebody. If you don't do that, then it's difficult to love another person. Because what you do, you expect that person to love you, to love you do everything for you. It's not possible. And that's why we see conflicts. Because people go into a marriage and say, okay, this my partner is going to do everything for me. No. It's the two persons, you know, coming together. And I need to mention something spiritually. People say, you are destined to marry this person. No. There are thousand and one persons that have that same quality that suits you. It's just for you to open your eyes very well, listen, then you know that this is the right. There are several of them, not only one person in this world. There are several of them because the, the, the qualities will complement each other. And when they complement each other, the two of them are looking at a high goal that gradually they are going to achieve. Even when obstacle comes, problem comes. Because of that complementing each other, the two of them will smiley, you know, achieve that their purpose. Mm. And people around them will benefit. No parents will stop that kind of marriage. No gossip will stop that kind of marriage because the two persons have qualities that is complementing each other. There must be a balancing act. But what do we see today? Parents force children to cement our relationship. <laughs> and we shall be my, my business partner. You are my business partner, so you must marry the child of this. You must, you know, and what happened at the end? Even, I don't want to even go too far. Even uh, the current King, King Charles III, history has it that mm. the late wife was not even who he wanted to get married yeah. to. He married somebody. What happened at the end of the day? This is royalty in the whole world. What happened? Today now, what are we seeing? The so-called side chick is now queen, what they call her? Consul. 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 So we can see. So we just need to let young people believe that, they, especially young women, they should not be, the people should not force them to get into marriage. And they tell you, oh, you know, a woman's life is, uh, what they call it, is a flower. At some time, this is, all this is wrong assumption. Mm -hmm. I've seen somebody who got married, a man, a man for, okay, say, man has no time. He said he got married at 42, first child. Mm. All the young ones got married. And he said, we all came to this world differently. So, your destiny is not tied to mine. And today, he's living very well. So the same thing also applies to women too. We've seen women at 35, 36, 37, a lot of pressure. And because of that, they go into a relationship at the end of the day. What happens? Okay. So the young women should also look at it very well and see that, yes, when you see that your soulmate, nobody will tell you. You will do. Because you will see that vibration. You see that two of you are always connecting on a deeper level, not on the sensual level. That is also very important, though, in marriage. Mm -hmm. Very, very important to keep a healthy mm -hmm. marriage. You know, that sensual level, the other room, is also very, very key. Well, that's the question. Yes. No, you just okay. go ahead. Number two, they take full responsibility for their own emotions yes it's usually abuser they say you make me beat you that's an abuser no matter what your spouse has done to you you are expected to control your emotions 
You know, so because your, your, your spouse acted this way, then that has influenced your own behavior and you are striking or doing some other thing. So for an healthy marriage, both parties take control of their emotions. We know that we are all emotional human beings. You must have emotions from time to time. Yes, that's why you are a human being. But you should take control of that um, emotion. Number three, they set and maintain healthy boundaries. Okay. People don't understand this. He's a sportsman. She likes to watch. <laughs> Is it Z-Wall or what? <laughs> you, he, 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 she knows that once it's that sports time, there's no crossing. Is that not so? He wants to. He also knows when it's time for Z world, or is it what they call it, or is it behind the cloud, I mean, behind yeah. the moon? I don't yeah. know what they call it then. You know, that is boundaries. Then, occasionally, to spice it, she can come say, Okay, if I like this funny story that um, the, the husband was watching, maybe it's uh, uh, Man U or Chelsea playing, and the young lady trying to impress, say, Ah, is it a Iba and uh, Charles that is playing? <laughs> And the advanced said, can't you see the Jesse? You don't know that uh, Blues is uh, Chelsea and uh, this one is uh, Liverpool, you know, because his team was busy. <laughs> so you can see. And of course, the young woman didn't like that kind of a reaction. Right. So you should know your boundaries. And if you want to begin to understand your, the likes of your spouse, take your time. Mm. Take your time to understand it. So that young lady has taken her time to understand which one is blues, which one is Liverpool. Right. You know, understand that little. And now, you know, just chip it to him while he's enjoying himself. Of course, you will see that that relationship will continue to get healthier and healthier. healthier. So that's why I say they know their boundaries. boundaries okay. The next one is they deal with conflict as a team. Okay. They deal with conflict as a team. If I talk to marriage couples, young ones especially, and they say there is no conflict in their marriage, <laughs> that's a red flag. It's either one person is 100% submissive, which means it's not possible, or there is no communication in that marriage. No matter how good we are, two persons from different backgrounds, there must be conflict. There must be conflict. It's, they resolve that complete conflict as a team. You know, you have a, just a little misunderstanding quarrel. You don't just the next thing you're on the phone calling somebody, or he's yes, he's out to go and meet the boys. You are not resolving the issue as a team. Mm -hmm. You should resolve the issue as a team. You know, you don't need to keep any grudge. You know that two of you have a joint tax. So no matter the challenge, two of you will, no, so, so, so. will serve it together. The next one, I'll quickly just read it. They have fun together. This is very interesting. Yes. Like I said, sensual appetite is very key in a relationship. Okay. So they have fun together. And of course, it's not only sensual appetite that is about fun, you know, once in a while. You know? But I've seen cases where, yeah, that was in a papa then, the young man said, ah, he's waiting for his wife. Or the wife said, this place that you go, this place that you go every evening on Friday, I want to meet you, I want to block you there. And he said, no problem, come. And of course, she left VI, because he worked in a papa, and they both met in the place, and they had fun, like every other person that were there. And she said, ah, so this is what you guys enjoy. Unknown to her, <laughs> Some other people were around there, you know. Some men wouldn't come with their... You understand know, what I'm trying to say? You know? And they say, ah, Madam, why are you coming to disturb us now? We've left you to take him home. Oh. This is our own territory. <laughs> you know? So once in a while, also try to see how you can catch phone with him. Go to places, you know, that he goes with the boys. Try to also be around there. Okay. We're not saying maybe if he drinks, then you two want to start um, drinking, but one or two will not spoil <laughs> yes, any question five continue. <laughs> okay, uh, you, you probably just want to run us okay, the yes. as quickly as possible. They support each other, of course, that is okay. obvious. Then they don't assume what their partners are thinking. Okay. You know, once there is an issue, they don't just generalize. Mm -hmm. They want to be sure that this is what is uh, happening. Yeah. So 
these are some of there are so many of them. I don't no. know that we have time no, to. No, no, no. Okay. We won't have time. For we don't that. have the time, so mm. we'll just go straight to the final. Okay, I think we, we there are just very few of them. Okay. We have time to just look at it. I'll just read it quickly. They meet when they say sorry. Okay. Yes. You know, some people just say, hey, "Okay, I'm sorry," but when in a healthy marriage, once each any person says, "I am sorry," it is coming from their hearts. Okay. Then. They feel as though their partner is their safety net. They know that whatever happens to them, no matter the crisis they are going through in their place of work, when they are getting home, they know that they are coming to a safety net. Their partner will not judge them. Their partner will reason with them. Their partner will serve as a shield and begin to say, yes, we are still together, no matter what has happened. Not when one or two little things you just heard then yeah, fair enough. you are making conclusion like that woman that died now yeah. well i won't say me i'm so rest in peace but that's so cannot rest in peace mm -hmm. okay just an information she had and she was pursuing and whatever okay then the next one their sex life is striving very superb their home is bursting with positive energy okay they don't keep grudges so those are some of the signs of a uh, unhealthy Healthy. Marriage. marriage okay, okay. Yes. um i think it's it's a very good one that you've laid down the foundation exactly as you've said it's um quite you know um expository and it's yeah. lengthy it's not something that can be yeah. exhausted, exhausted at you once. know at once so uh, what we'll do is we'll continue with this series on monday uh, okay. it's good that you've already laid down the foundation so on monday we just you know continue with how um we can have um financial bliss in our marriages I'm Charles Fracker. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so always. much. Yes, thank you very much. Fine, good. Just 30 seconds. Okay. Let's close with a quote. Okay, that's fine. If you marry a monkey for his wealth, mm -hmm. the monkey goes, but the monkey remains. Thank you. The money goes, but the monkey no. remains. remains. That's wow, interesting. Means. <laughs> thank you so much, Charles Fracker, for that. Thank you very thank much. You. So, on Monday, we'll be looking at financial planning, but financial planning checkup. Among, for, okay, for after coffee. concluding yes. this as well. Okay. Yeah. That was Charles Fracker out there taking us through the ropes of um, having financial bliss in marriages. And he has just given us, you know, various tips on how to have a healthy marriage. So you can be assured that Monday we'll continue the series talking about how to have financial bliss in our marriages. I'm sure you must have learned a thing or two. It's time to go on another break. We'll return. We'll delve into more conversations for you. Please stay with us.